Total Anomalous Pulmonary Venous Return, abbreviated TAPVR. The best way to explain this is to draw a diagram of the heart and show exactly what's going on in this congenital heart defect. So the first thing I'll do is draw the four chambers. And of course, this is the right atrium. This is the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle. And this is the left atrium. And draining into this side are the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. And draining out from the right ventricle is, of course, a blood vessel known as the pulmonary artery. And that goes to the lung. And coming out from the lung is the pulmonary veins that go all the way back to the left atrium. In between these chambers, of course, you have uh, valves that allow the flow of blood to come out from one chamber into another. And the end result is the blood going into this circulation via the aorta. Normally, the blood that returns back to the heart is deoxygenated. So I will use gray to represent the deoxygenated blood that returns back to the heart. And it comes into the right atrium, into the right ventricle, into the pulmonary artery, and then it goes to the lung. Now the lung has a lot of oxygen in it, so once the deoxygenated blood picks up the oxygen from the lung, it becomes oxygenated blood, which I will represent with the red, and it goes back to the left atrium, into the left ventricle, out into the circulation. Now this is essentially a diagram of the heart working normally. So what is the scenario in total anomalous pulmonary venous return? Well, what happens in this congenital heart defect is that the pulmonary veins, which are right here, are not draining into the left atrium. Instead, they drain into the right atrium. So I'll draw that. So that's the scenario. So as you can see, this blood that's oxygenated comes back into the right atrium and mixes with the deoxygenated blood that's come back into the right atrium from the circulation. So that's a huge problem because that's not really going to provide any oxygenated blood to the aorta. The entire left side of the heart here is pretty much sealed off. So this is incompatible with life. But fortunately, what happens in TAPV VR is that you have a little opening in between the atrium right here. And this opening is known as an ASD, also known as an atrial septal defect. It's basically a small opening between the two atrium, right atrium and left atrium. And what that does is it allows the blood to go from the right side to the left side. So it allows a right to left shunt. Now notice very carefully here that the right atrium has both deoxygenated and oxygenated blood that's going to be mixing together. So the end result is not going to be completely oxygenated blood. So I'm going to represent that blood as orange. So the orange blood comes back into the left atrium. That's what goes into the left ventricle and eventually out into the aorta, into the circulation. Now, this has some consequences. All this pathology is going to present in a certain way in the patient, and I'll explain as follows. The first thing that's going to happen is right here in the right atrium, you're going to have pretty much double the amount of blood or more than double, and that results in right atrium enlargement. So that's the first thing I want you to keep in mind. This right atrium will become bigger. The next consequence is right here in the right ventricle. Because this right ventricle now has a lot of blood in it, 
and it has to pump all this extra blood into the pulmonary artery, the muscle of the right ventricle will hypertrophy. It will get bigger. And that basically results in right ventricular hypertrophy. So these two are very important findings on a cardiac test such as an echocardiogram or even an EKG. The next set of consequences involve the pulmonary system, the pulmonary artery and the lung. Now notice what's happening here in the pulmonary artery. You have a lot of blood coming in right here and that essentially results in pulmonary circulation being increased. So that's a very important aspect of this pathology, increased pulmonary circulation. Now if you have an increased amount of volume in the pulmonary artery, that will result in pulmonary hypertension. And then once all this extra volume goes to the lung, you're going to have extra fluid in the lung and that can lead to pulmonary edema. On physical exam, if the patient does indeed have pulmonary edema, you will hear crackles. So I want you to understand why that happens. And finally, one last thing I want to mention is that if you notice this part here, you do have oxygenated blood going into the circulation, but it's not 100% oxygenated because it was mixed in with some of this deoxygenated blood. So you will have a scenario of mild cyanosis. So I hope that makes sense without the diagram becoming too complicated. So now let's talk a little bit more about symptoms and physical exam findings and diagnosis. So as I mentioned previously in the diagram, a lot of these symptoms are the result of the patient developing pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary edema, and a mild case of cyanosis. And on physical exam, this can be represented by crackles when you listen to the lung because of the fluid due to the pulmonary edema. And on heart exam, you will hear a loud second heart sound. Now the diagnosis of uh, total anomalous pulmonary venous return is done with a few tests, chest x-ray, EKG, and echocardiogram. Each of these will show very distinct things. Chest x-ray will be able to show the pulmonary edema. The EKG will show the right ventricular hypertrophy I discussed earlier, and will also show right axis deviation, which is a direct consequence of right ventricular hypertrophy. The echocardiogram will of course show you the ASD, that very important ASD that allows the right to left shunt. And it will also show that the right atrium is enlarged and it will also show the right ventricular hypertrophy, the echocardiogram. And finally the treatment, essentially the treatment is a surgical repair of the congenital heart defect. So let's take a look now at a few clinical vignettes and see what this looks like. A neonate is rushed to a pediatric cardiac center hours after his birth at a nearby hospital. Prior to transport, he was intubated and umbilical arterial and venous lines were placed. In spite of appropriate ventilator settings and fluid management, he is acidotic, cyanotic, and poorly perfused. There is no murmur and pulmonary crackles are heard. His pulses are weak in all extremities and capillary refill time is prolonged. Chest x-ray shows small heart with pulmonary edema. 
A bedside echo reveals an atrial septal defect with flow from enlarged right atrium into left atrium. The left ventricle also appears small. The right ventricle and main pulmonary valve are also enlarged. The most likely diagnosis is this clinical vignette encompasses pretty much everything involved in total anomalous pulmonary venous return. You have a patient that's cyanotic, has pulmonary crackles, chest x-ray shows pulmonary edema, and then you have the ASD, and then you have, of course, the right-to-left shunt that is being shown uh, by the echocardiogram. Next is a term male infant is found to be cyanotic shortly after birth and requires endotracheal intubation. On physical exam, his blood pressure is 68 over 34, pulse is 180, the respirations are 32. His precordium is dynamic, he has a grade 3 systolic murmur and a single S2. Chest x-ray shows a normal heart size with increased pulmonary vascular markings. EKG shows right ventricular hypertrophy with peaked P waves. An ABG on an FiO2 of 100 shows pH of 7.34, PaCO2 of 47, and PaO2 of 46. Which of the following diagnoses is most consistent with these findings? Um, they give you quite a few clues, like the EKG finding, the chest x-ray finding, and the fact that the patient is cyanotic. So E is the right answer. And finally, a baby is born at 37 weeks gestation and goes home with the mother on the second day of life without noted problems. The parents are not able to keep up the first appointment with the pediatrician two days later, but go to the emergency department when the baby is two weeks of age. They are concerned because the baby is breathing fast and color is blue at times. On exam, the baby is tachypneic and tachycardic. He has a pulse ox reading of 84 on room air and is placed on oxygen. On exam, a loud systolic murmur is heard along the left sternal border and a gallop rhythm is present. A chest x-ray shows a large heart with a prominent right ventricle and pulmonary artery and a large supracardiac shadow and pulmonary overcirculation. An EKG shows right ventricular hypertrophy and right atrial enlargement. An echo is then performed to confirm which of the following diagnoses. So again, a lot of clues that point to choice C, including the pulmonary overcirculation, the right ventricular hypertrophy, and the cyanosis as well.